For me, exercise in general has been really helpful for sleep, and it's not necessarily exercise at night that helps me sleep, but just exercise at some point during the day. I really actually think the opposite is also true, where if I don't get enough exercise, I just feel like my body does not feel fatigued enough to fall asleep. And I also find that if I exercise too late in the evening, too intensely, that definitely uh, prevents me from falling asleep. If I'm eating well, I tend to sleep better. If I'm like working out, I tend to sleep better. These are all like kind of the inputs that tend to help me have better sleep. So if I'm like tracking my sleep and I'm having like a bad streak, um, Zen mode is one thing I'll do to kind of snap out of that, but then it's like, okay, I need to like make sure my diet is on track, make sure my exercise is on track, and that'll help me pop back into that sleep pattern. Yeah, I really have done my best to maximize my room for sleep and really just make it the place that I go to go to sleep. Uh, there's no TV in there, nothing to distract me. Uh, I have a sound machine because a lot of my challenges with sleep are kind of racing thoughts. And my favorite hacks for improving sleep are blacking out the room. So whatever means necessary, blackout shades, closing the curtains, you know, putting stuff over blinky lights or clocks. I make sure that my bed's made, which sounds kind of weird. Um, but it was distressing a little bit, I found, to get into an unmade, messy bed. And I liked the idea of climbing into a made bed. And then I read for about 45 minutes. I wear my true dark glasses, block out all the jangly, noisy light that I might be experiencing. Uh, and then I do five minutes of meditation and fall asleep. Like how I get ready for sleep is an act of consciousness. I used to think of sleep as this sort of accidental thing that happened at the end of a very long day. And now it's this thoughtful contribution to tomorrow is what I think of my sleep as, so it's amazing. My favorite hacks to improve my sleep are definitely sleep mode and zen mode. It took me actually longer uh, to try those two together because sometimes taking two supplements at the same time for your sleep feels really scary. Uh, but when I tried those two things together, I realized that it had a magical effect on uh, my overall quality of sleep. And when I take sleep mode and zen mode together, I don't have that hangover effect. Whether you're having sleep issues or not, I think integrating meditation into your life can have um, some profound effects. So all of my apps turn off at 9 p.m. except the Audible app. And I really just get into bed. I listen to, right now I'm listening to Sherlock Holmes on, on audio. The most obvious one is bulletproof sleep mode. It's a sleep supplement that I formulated, <laughs> so clearly I, I must think that one works. But another trick that few people knew about until I wrote the first blog on this is about taking collagen before sleep. Collagen is a very rich source of glycine, which can be a calming amino acid. So taking bulletproof collagen, uh, for some people they use a scoop or two of that before bed and they just sleep better. And this is one of those things where you're not necessarily eating, but using a targeted amount of amino acids in your protein to do that. A lot of times people wake up in the morning because they have a blood sugar crash around three to five in the morning and then the body says, oh, I know how to raise blood sugar, have some adrenaline and cortisol and then you can't go back to sleep. So the solution for that is you can have some brain octane oil with your collagen before you go to bed. And brain octane oil can provide an alternate source of energy besides glucose in the form of ketones. So some people just sleep like a baby when they have that energy backup system. And for other people, it's raw honey. And raw honey can increase liver glycogen, which is a way of storing carbohydrates so that when you would have woken up at three in the morning, there was enough sugar on demand for the brain that your blood sugar levels were constant throughout the night. Now, if I actually get a fair amount of deep sleep, I can sleep for six hours if I get two to three hours of deep sleep and be good to go. Whereas before I was getting eight hours of sleep, but only like an hour of deep sleep and still waking up tired. So all of these things have made me aware of what I need to do. Also not eating right before bed or drinking wine right before bed. Um, turns out when I do those things, now I'm aware and I can track my sleep through the app and I can see actually the outcomes. Like if I drink wine right before bed, hmm, who knew? So yes, I do track my sleep. Uh, it's a relatively recent phenomenon when I discovered the Aura Ring. 
uh, I uh, learned what a great device it is for sleep and I wanted to learn more uh, about my sleep and actually also my resting heart rate. It made me realize the importance of consistency and understand how much better my sleep is when I am consistent. So it's become really kind of a game for me to say, what did I do yesterday that made me sleep really well tonight? And if I wake up feeling a bit weird and my sleep data shows that, it's like, oh, I bet I can predict what I did. So for me, the big thing is I feel like I have this huge sense of control over the quality and duration of my sleep. And I don't think I had that going back five or 10 years. If I could say anything about biohacking or nutrition or health and wellness or anything like that, I would say above all sleep is really the most important thing you can do for health and longevity. Uh, sleep is so critical for your body to uh, restore, repair, consolidate memory. Uh, there's so many things your body's doing to prepare you for the next day and the rest of your life while you're sleeping. So really, I, I recommend highly getting your sleep in order. It's made such a big difference for me.